Mercedes Stevenson is joining us now from Saguenay, Quebec, where the Liberals are working on their fall agenda. And I want to start with this resignation by Stephen Harper. A message, simple, posted up online, not a lot of fanfare. Perhaps that's not surprising for Stephen Harper, though, Mercedes. Yeah, sticking to the way that he's done things, he likes to be low key. He doesn't like to make announcements in front of the press. We'd been anticipating this for some time, Todd. Uh, we learned in the spring that he was expected to leave by the fall, probably before Parliament came back. He was there for a year as an MP. He was pretty quiet, uh, but he certainly was there attending votes and everything else. He's been getting ready to put together a consulting practice he's going to launch uh, with some of his closest advisors from the time that he was in government. So today we are learning that, and uh, I apologize. Here you're going to hear some loud noise in the background. We are at CFB Bagotville, so there's fighter jets taking off in the background, uh, which is pretty cool. So I want to apologize for that. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so you are there at the Air Force Base because there's a big announcement coming in terms of Canada and peacekeeping. That's right. The Liberals have a whole slew of ministers on hand today to announce this. You know, we know that they have been saying they want to do more when it comes to peacekeeping. And of course, remember that uh, the defense minister was in Africa quite recently. He took Romeo Dallaire with him and Louise Arbour. Uh, of course, Romeo Dallaire commanded a UN force in Rwanda and witnessed the atrocities there. Louis Arbour, uh, an expert in international human rights law, both came along. So what we're expecting today is something to do with what this contribution will look like. We expect it to go to Africa, but we might not find out where in Africa today. But what we're expecting to learn is, is what this will look like. And I know that all sounds very vague. It's all we have right now, but we are safe to say there's going to be a major peacekeeping announcement today, uh, and it will give us a sense of what the government is willing to commit to. It's something they have been signaling uh, ever since the election last year, increasingly verbally, and uh, we're going to perhaps find out some details today. You and I have talked about this for the past couple of months, this sort of back to the future move by the Liberals. You think about Lester B. Pearson, Liberal Prime Minister in the 1960s, who was a big advocate of peacekeeping, and now under a Liberal Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, we're going to see a return to that, or a pivot anyway, for Canada. We will, and you know, it's it's a polarizing issue because those who criticize it say, look, there's no peace to keep. What Lester B. Pearson came up with in the Suez crisis was two sides who didn't want to fight each other. How do you deal with conflicts in Africa, which can often be ethnic, they can be along tribal lines, they can be a whole bunch of political factors there where neither side wants to stop fighting. So how do you give the soldiers who are going to be on the ground the right rules of engagement so that they can be involved? There was a lot of post-traumatic stress disorder coming out of the former Yugoslavia and other Canadian peacekeeping missions and certainly veterans I've spoken with say that's one of the things they're going to be most interested to hear. They felt they were often told they had to stand by and watch when atrocities unfolded. They want to know that they'll have the rules of engagement to be able to act if they see something wrong happening. Mercedes Stevenson live from Bagotville, Quebec. The Canadian Forces base there for a big peacekeeping announcement. We'll be keeping our eye on it, Mercedes. Thank you for this.